It's the shortest, but it's also one of the most enjoyable. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, I will be straight up, right off the bat, I actually dislike this book the most. I admittedly have only read it once, but it took me forever to get through, mainly because Harry was going through his emo phase, as I would say in the book. He also goes through a bit of that in the movie as well, with him just feeling all alone, saying he's gonna go off on his own, no one cares about me, no one understands me. He actually says, you don't understand. Emo Harry in the movie is thankfully far less nauseating than the book version. However, there also are a few bits cut out from the book that are kind of unfortunate losses, particularly when they go to the magical hospital and they found Gildroy in there, but they also come across Neville's parents. This is one aspect of the film that they try their best to do without actually going all the way there and showing his parents physically, more so through the photos. This is the first movie where we see Neville get more development rather than being a bumbling idiot. We talk about his parents, we talk about Bellatrix, we talk about the scope of what is coming. Funnily enough, as I said, it's the longest book in the series and it's somehow translated into the shortest film. And I think it's because they cut off so much fat that they make it one of the most enjoyable films because they're focusing on the very key essential elements being Harry's kind of relationship with Dumbledore as well as his own sort of wanting to fight his own resilience to what is going on as well as the kids coming together to form Dumbledore's army. Obviously Dolores Umbridge being the most evil bitch in all of written literature almost. I think she even scored up there as one of the most evil characters ever written. I think it was on some survey a while back. But she is an evil, evil little woman who I kept on going back and forth with. I couldn't remember if she's a Death Eater or not because she's a full-on Gestapo SS officer essentially in terms of how she governs the Hogwarts school. However, the problem is the Order of the Phoenix is actually so relegated in this film. And that might be one big complaint about it is that for it being the title of the movie, they only make up about the first maybe 10 minutes of it and then everything else afterwards is Harry. The whole Order of the Phoenix is a resistance group as well as Cornelius Fudge being a very, very clear as day Neville Chamberlain caricature in terms of just completely denying the obvious threat that's in front of them. This is also the first film that David Yates directed and this is it. This is now the point of where we have got the Harry Potter visual storytelling down because the visual aspects of the films will not change from here on out. They have nailed down what they like. Is it exactly what I envisioned? Maybe it is thankfully updating it for a more obvious audience because these books were written during the 90s. The first two movies really encapsulate the idea of the 90s. We're entering into the mid 2000s now so obviously the series needs to update itself and this is the point where they just they got it. They pretty much got the visual style. Some people don't enjoy it, some people do. I think that it's what was necessary to keep the series going and thankfully they don't have to try and go through any more visual changes because now they've got it and so now they can focus on the narrative. Order of the Phoenix also has some of my favorite editing, particularly when Harry is getting the whole mind screwing at the end of the film where Voldemort's trying to enter his mind, trying to take him over and just the very strange visualizations through it, like Harry seeing himself in the mirror as Voldemort. Voldemort kind of on that green screen going <laughs> I enjoyed this bit of editing and I think it really worked in terms of the film's central themes, which yes, they are beaten over the head to you. The amount of times that Harry is like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and the guys are like, well, we're here for you, Harry. We're your friends. This happens about three or four times and it gets a little nauseating at the end. Also, I find it interesting that you never get a resolution with Chow at the end. We find out that she was tortured or forced to give up information. But Harry and her never really get a resolution at the end of the film, which I thought was a little weird. It, you set it up, but you didn't finish the landing. Either way, I think that Order of the Phoenix, while having a few obvious things removed from the novel, as well as kind of just being a very centralized film, it is much more enjoyable 
than uh, a few of the films in the, in the series. And it's a giant surprise to me because, again, I thought this book just sucked. I thought it was too long. I thought it was too depressing. I thought it was just not entertaining at all. I enjoy Order of the Phoenix in film form far more than I enjoy it in book form. Thankfully, they have a very, very great pacing. It's also an interesting change because the normal screenwriter, Steve Close, did not write this film. It was done by a different writer, so I don't know whether that had an effect on how the film was paced. Maybe he was working on the latter three films. I don't know. I thought it was, it was nice. It just, it moves very smoothly. It's probably one of the cleanest Harry Potter experiences in terms of just very concise narrative, good visual style, and solid directing. So in the end, I'm going to give The Order of the Phoenix a 5 out of 7. I'm, yeah, pretty decent. It always surprises me when I watch it. Which, by the way, also, another little tidbit. After Goblet of Fire came out and then the seventh book came out, and I just hated the ending of the seventh book so much that I did not watch any more Harry Potter movies. I went cold turkey completely. I never saw the latter four films in theaters. And I admit I regret it because I've never seen anyone, any theater, do a marathon or show any of the films aside from the first one. They never show the latter ones. And I remember the lines for Deathly Hollows Part 2. I remember them being around the theater block. That was when stuff like that still happened. Either way, we'll come to those stories when we get to those films. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is next. So, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.